Now we're at the end of 2021, a three-door Cosworth sold through Silverstone Auctions for a record break at £103,000. Are the Facebook experts kind of lost their mind a bit? This was a mental price for a standard three-door Cosworth, like what that is. Since then, an RS500 has blew that out of the water and sold for a record absolutely mind-boggling £596,000. But the three-door Cosworth that sold through Silverstone Auctions has been delivered to Paul Linford Racing for recommissioning to get it back on the road. So I've always, one thing right quickly, if you buy a car through auction, it's always a bit bad to me because I've been to auctions and you see the car they're sitting nice under the lights and all you can do is you can look at it, you can maybe pop the bonnet, you can maybe have a look inside. But personally, right, if I was spending this much money, I would, I would want the bumpers off, I would want to see behind the bumpers, I would want to see everything. So if you go to a specialist and avoid the auctions, you can kind of get the cars on the ramp, like if you went to Paul's, right? You would get the cars on the ramp, you would port around, you would, you would take a bore scope and check inside the engine, you would take a compression tester, you would check for compression in each four cylinder of the engine, you would do a lot more than through auction. So buying through auction is kind of like, it's not buying blind, but you're limited to what you can look at. Whereas if you go through a specialist, you can basically, it's up to you and the fella selling the car, how far you can go. If someone came to view, if someone came to view my car and they said, Adam, can I take the bumpers off? I would, I would quite happily take bumpers off for people, let them stay behind, check for crash damage, stuff like that. So just a quick thing there, my opinion, buying through auction, you're kind of limited as to what you can do. But this three door, anyway, sold for £103,000. So it was a bit of a gamble for the lad that bought it. So we're going to go down Paul Linford Racing and see what the lad bought. Because honestly, you could buy through these auctions and you might get it home. You might finally get a chance to get up on the ramp, look underneath and just be absolutely devastated. It could be a mess. So let's go down. We'll see what the lad bought through Silverstone Auctions, the back end of 2021 for his £103,000. Let's go. The guy who owns the car now is called Chris. One of the most patient people you'll ever find in your life. Really? Because he bought the car, um, contacted me straight away and said, would you recommission the car? Because it's been stood quite a few years. And I said, look, I'm busy, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, he's waited all this time, well over a year. So, we're, yeah, well over a year now, till I could get it in. Uh -huh. Anyway, he brought it up uh, Friday. Um, no, yesterday, sorry, Saturday on a transporter. Um, and all it, I'm doing really is recommissioning it back, ready to go on road. Obviously belts, tensioners, full service, uh, new tyres, because it's got the original Dunlop D40 tyres it. Has it really? It. Yeah. And obviously he's quite aware that you can't really drive them on these tyres anymore. They didn't drive that well when they were new on these tyres. <laughs> um, so he's just basically said, look, Paul, do whatever you think it wants, whatever it wants, just do it. Uh -huh. Simple as that. Which, you know, when people say that, you think... <laughs> this is going to be a big bill, but when the car, I mean, I remember seeing the car at Silverstone. And Auctions. A, yeah, Silverstone. yeah, I was there, and there's a bit of an irony, really, because obviously uh, over this weekend, there's that famous black RS500 just uh -huh. sold for 600,000 quid. This was another of them cars. The estimate on the car, I think you've got the paperwork there. Uh -huh. Was it 85 to 100,000 or something? 80 to 100,000. Yeah. And everybody was like, oh, I'll never sell for that. You know, dreamers, dreamers, it'll never sell for that. And I remember this car hitting the headlines when it sold for 92 grand. Everybody was like, that's mental. Mm -hmm. Plus fees, so over 100 grand. Over 100 grand. You look at this car now, and within 12, 13, 14 months, all of a sudden, it doesn't look that dear, yeah. does it? This is low miles as well, isn't it? Yeah, and, and to be fair, when we put it in air, you'll see... This is unbelievable. Mint. Yeah. The can I have it inside? Of course we can. The mileage 10,275 from Neil. <sighs> not many like that now, is there? No. Not genuine mileage like that. It is absolutely... Well, it's one of the best three doors wow. I've ever seen, without a shadow of a doubt. That dashboard <laughs> as well. They normally crack the dashboard and that one's just perfect, isn't it? it, it just perfect. Uh -huh. And the, the, I'll, I'll read this for you, if I may, because he sent me this. And the current owner? Yeah, he sent me this. And obviously, my memory being as old as I am ain't that good. <laughs> so I'd rather read it and get it right. Well, the reason he paid so much for this car is he had a connection to it. Mm -hmm. His friend, John, bought it new from Stormford Ford in 1987. I bought it from John 
in 1995 for 10,000 quid <laughs> with 5,500 miles on it approximately. Uh, I sold it for 12,500 in 1997 to fund buying a load of BSA spares when I was visiting the USA. I always regretted selling this one and didn't know where the car was. Uh, remember, I asked you about it at Ford Fair, which you did, mm -hmm. and obviously I didn't know where the car was. It then appeared on Facebook due to be auctioned at Silverstone Auctions, um, and this was on the Thursday, so the car was due to be auctioned that weekend, so it had come up, um, and it's obviously in two days' time, he said. Um, and the interest in these cars was rekindled by watching your videos with Adam <laughs> Smith. Um, so he says, you are to blame, and he's put that. Because I remember he actually came up to us that weekend. I remember, I remember. Do you remember? Uh -huh. He talked to us both, didn't he? And he said, what do you think it'll fetch, Paul? And I said, yeah, yeah. you never know no. auctions. You know, Especially if, Silverstone auctions, they do well, man. Yeah, oh, I mean, you, you know, you can't take it away from Silverstone auctions. They have, have had some of the best results uh -huh. ever anywhere in the world. Obviously, people only remember the big hitters. Cars like this, cars like that Black 500, people remember them. They uh -huh. don't ever remember all the ones that don't meet reserve or blah, blah, blah. And I said exactly that to Chris. I said, you never know. It might, it might get nowhere near reserve. It might go mental. You don't know. Anyway, he told us the story then, if you remember, that he owned it, he had to sell it, and he's always wanted it back. And I said to him, keep your mouth shut, Chris, because... The last thing you want to do is walk around here telling everybody you're running that car no matter what it fetches. Anyway, he won it. He paid the 92000 for it. He got the car that he always regretted selling back. And I think, I think that's a fabulous story, it is. isn't it? When, it's when, mint as well, Mike. Can we have a look under the bonnet, Paul? Yeah, yeah. Because when I came, the bonnet was up and it is mint mine under. It is, it is honestly, without lie, one of the best three doors I've ever seen. Yeah, just, oh, it is a nice mind. Stunning. The only I, thing I you tell can, what I noticed up here, just how clean it is in that corner there. Just, just it's and, he, and and Chris hasn't done anything to it. He's not touched it since he's had it, apart from probably staring it for hours and hours. Uh -huh. And the only thing that I picked up on that Chris isn't happy with is the battery. Right. So we're going to change it to a proper because I keep them in stock. The flat terminal batteries. Right. You obviously you can't get the white ones anymore, but we'll put a flat terminal battery on. And the first thing Chris said, which made me laugh, is. Can you get the original Ford Motocraft sticker for about <laughs> so, Yeah, we can get one, Chris. We're taking the alarm off I was, it. I was going to say that's a uh, can you alarm mine, isn't it? I mean, it still works, uh -huh. and, it, and it's quite fitting, really, isn't it? You know, cause period every, looking. Yeah, when we all had these years ago, that's what you had, wasn't mm -hmm. it? You know, and you had one of them that screwed onto the dash, that little light went on. <laughs> you look now and think, he screwed it on his <laughs> dashboard. But isn't oh, it that, just... All the stamps now on it. I'll tell you what, if you think you're impressed with this, Wait till you see it underneath. Oh, and take it up. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Look how mint that fog light is, even. It's just. It hasn't even got a stone chip on it. It's just absolutely stunning, isn't it? God, so thigh. So you want an exhaust too? That's a stainless exhaust, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, to be honest, I, I, I think I've said it in videos before, Adam. We almost class now with stainless steel exhaust and Cornish suspension as standard, standard equipment. Uh -huh, because, uh -huh. you, you know, you wouldn't drive a car now on standard suspension. But then, look at them <laughs> shockers. <laughs> you Are know, the motorcraft yeah, ones they're too. the original motorcraft ones. Yeah, God. you know, it is just all the original calipers there. It's mind blowing, isn't it? The ABS sensors and that. Yeah, so it's basically it wants um, one of the reproduction exhausts put in on it. So it mild looks, steel, the mild steel ones, um, to make it look original. And the only other thing on the whole car that's non-original is it got a an aluminium radiator put in. Uh -huh. Well, that's simply because you can't get them anymore. Obviously, the Just radiators are obsolete now. Uh -huh. um, but I can get them recorded with the original core in them. All oh, right. So I said to him, I'll have to get one of my old radiators, get it recorded, and then put the, uh, a standard radiator back in. But that's you something you never, uh, I've no. never really seen on a the original, uh, like Ducton, Ducton cover. It's mind blowing, isn't it? Isn't it? Back of the fog lights there, just moving. God, it is something else, this mind. It is, it is unbelievable. Imagine if you spent a few days cleaning this. Mm -hmm. Not many chassis legs like that left now, is there? Because no. I always go on the chassis legs. I mean, it, look at that. They're the original plugs they put in the footwell, and it's still got the zinc coating on it. 
Absolutely. They're rubber. No, they're like a, are they? Like a tin. Like a tin? Yeah. Oh, I thought they were a rubber one. I no. didn't know that. It's just fantastic, isn't it? It is. So is that how the fuel tanks came as well? Yep. Everybody says, oh, they should be black. So what's that? That looks like a... It's just like a bare metal. That's bare all metal. There. It's been yeah. covered in yeah, something. Yeah, just covered in wax oil. Oh, amazing, mate. I mean, look, we call them jacking points, don't we? But they're not jacking points. But look at that. Ah, I mint. Where do you find them like that? And they all come like this with the like the yeah, covering on the well that's where the floor number is, the chassis right, number. Yeah, yeah. I mean look at all you know, all, these brackets have still got the zinc coating on them and this has been looked after, hasn't it? I've just forgotten oh, yeah. about for a number of years. Ah nice, nice. Yeah, so I say just to basically anything we think it wants to make it, you know, usable and we like, he will uh -huh. use it, will Chris. Uh -huh. I mean obviously he's not gonna be doing thousands no, of a miles a year, but fair weather car. Look at that. So what's the stamps for, do you know? Obviously that tells you date on it. So whether that's 27th or the 11th, 1986. Uh -huh. Oh, right, all right, all right. And these are all just PDI marks and what have you. So is he going to get it cleaned and kind of, because I mean, it is spotless, but it has obviously got some just, wood just, grime. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm, I'm well, I'll just wipe, I'll wipe detail, a lot of it off it? for him. I'll take a lot of uh -huh. it off. Nice summer's day, just get a bucket of soapy water out yeah. and give it a rub down. And just clean it off. Silly things like there, look. The front splitters come off, uh -huh. so I'll just clip that back on, put a pot rivet back in it, just to hold it back on. I mean, it pops back on, but it just wants a rivet in uh, to hold to it on. To... Minor little things. Uh -huh. No, just... it is nice. Have you done the oil and filter on this already? I haven't done anything, mate, no. Is that oil filter still looks brand new, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, no, we haven't done anything yet. He only came yesterday. Ah, oh, there's not many like this now, Paul. No. Not many at all. I'd be happy to own it, wouldn't you? Uh-huh. Uh, if you wanted a three doors and then this is what you would want to me like this, yeah. isn't it? And, and for me, I've always said I love RS 500s in black. I just think 500s look amazing in black. But three doors, to me, why? Do you reckon? And I don't know why. Uh -huh. What's the difference? Because they're know. very similar, uh -huh. but I just love a white three door. I go I through think... stages, me. Sometimes I, think... I go into Moonstone. Some, sometimes I like the black ones. Sometimes I, th I like the white ones. I'm just... I think a lot of it, change. there's a reasoning behind it that you don't remember. And it's maybe, you know, was the first one I ever saw, mm -hmm. a white three-door, and that's what... Stuck in, stuck in your mind. I know the first three-door I ever had was a white one, so that's probably it. Uh -huh. I had a Q-Reg one. Did you? Yeah, yeah, so it would have been one of them ones. It was nicked back in the day, right. wasn't it? And I had a Q-Reg one. I used to drive it like a lunatic everywhere. <laughs> Every roundabout opportunity, you were completely sideways, weren't you? And, you know... Meant. The good old days when we were young and a bit daft. Young and daft. Now we wait till everybody's left the roundabout, don't we, before we pull <laughs> right. out. So you're seeing, Paul, hey, we've got your, the original bill of sale for the yeah, car. Yeah, look at that. You don't get that anymore, do you? Tells you their standard radio, blah, blah, blah. That's the garage where it came from. Uh -huh. And obviously, look at the price. 16,846. Oh. Hey, what did it sell? 400... Well, 92 plus, plus fees, so we're well over 100, but look at all detail. Is this part of the original bill of sale? What yeah, this is the whole thing, and then obviously there's your final used car purchase invoice. Oh, that's a used car, that's a later so, uh, one. That's a later one, but there's just stacks and stacks of, history. Of, of everything, you know, the car's ever had. There's stacks and stacks of, of um, MOT certificates. You know, I mean, th th I think Chris will sort it all out because there's loads of them, you know, modern mm -hmm. ones. There's loads of old ones in here somewhere going right back. To put in yeah, there, look. Organise it. Yeah, there's loads of them. They're all yeah. a fantastic history for the car. Yeah, even the, the very early one, you know, the medium, shall we say, early ones. Yeah, f fantastic history it's on that car. It's amazing people... Like when the cars were worth nothing, it's amazing people still kind of kept all this. Well, that's the thing. Not many people did, did they? No. And when you come across it like that, it's quite... Uh, and there's even in there, look, what was in Winder at car, at auction. What, when Silverstone auction? Yeah, chassis number, offered with a large history folder, which includes the original purchase invoice, MOT history dating back from 1997, when the mileage is recorded at 5,490, RS Owners Club Insurance Valuations, your usual park service, stamps, etc., etc. Fully warranted 10,254 oh, miles. It's not many like that out there. No, Unbelievable, but yeah, it's got all the original, that's even the original garage, supply and garage um, booklet. Oh, right, uh -huh. And uh -huh. it's got all the... Nice. The books and the and the uh, 
service book that Chris has given me because he wants me to, to stamp it. Look at that. To say it's only done 10,000 miles, look, the service book's nearly full. <laughs> Unbelievable that, isn't it? So he'll have to get another one, won't he? But yeah, you don't fight, you don't, you just no, don't, you don't get them like this anymore. Now, as, as I said to you earlier, Adam, if, if I had this car, I think it would be one that would be very tempting I for me back. to keep it. Yeah, 100%, definitely. I've never seen a Ridgel Bullet seal like this. No, I've seen a few in my time, but you don't see many. Just the mm -hmm. kind of thing that owners throw away, isn't it? Uh-huh. What's that, a three grand deposit or something down? Yeah. Uh, 16,000 quid. I'll take two. <laughs> <laughs> Right, that's it fellas. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Paul for having us down. Thanks to Chris, the current owner of the car, who bought it at auction for letting us just have a look at it and tell the story of it really. I'll leave all links to Paul's social media below if you're interested in anything RS500. I'll leave links to my uh, Instagram and social media below. Um, anything you want to say, mate? No, just again, thanks for Chris for letting us do the video. It was good of him because, you know, some people are quite private about the cars, but I think he's very proud of it, so mm -hmm. yeah, good of him. I'll also say if Paul started a YouTube channel, uh, if Paul comments off from his YouTube, I'll pin that at the top so you can see what Paul get up, gets up to. Yeah, don't uh, waste your time watching him anymore, just <laughs> click on man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, again, mate, thanks for having us down. You're welcome. Thanks for watching, fellas. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. <laughs>